Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today is March 9th, or at least it is in my time zone. So March 9th actually means that it is Miku day. So Miku is a Vocaloid and that is who I'm going to be drawing for the entirety of today's video. I'm going to be doing about, I believe four drawings that I'm going to be showing you, but I did about five different Miku drawings in total. We'll get to that at a later point. But the reason why March 9th is Miku Day is actually because of kind of like a play on words in Japanese. So Mi uh, refers to three and Ku refers to nine in Japanese. So if you put them together, March 9th as three nine, it becomes Miku. So it's kind of similar to if you did more of like a play on words for Mario Day, which I believe is on March 10th. So literally tomorrow. So March, if you shorten it to how people abbreviate the word March is B-M-A-R, so Mar, and then 10 kind of looks like an I and an O, so it becomes Mario Day. So it's just kind of like a fun occasion that some people like to draw or kind of like low-key celebrate for. So I wanted to draw a bunch of Mikus for today. So I believe like for several years, usually, actually I don't know who exactly controls the contest, but there is usually like a kind of like a design contest for each Snow Miku. And this is the 2024 Snow Miku design, which is probably one of my favorites. I don't remember which is my other favorite and I used to draw fan art for that one as well. If I can find the file for that one, I will post it here. But the Snow Miku for 2024 is so, so cute. So her hair design, I really like the kind of like lighter color, also like the snowflakes in her hair, but she has like kind of like a cooking theme and I love the combination of the kind of like orange, the warm tones of the brown and kind of like the softer colors alongside with the teal kind of minty pale color of her hair. And I've already done like a sketchbook spread of this particular Miku. So it's probably a little bit familiar if you've watched that video as well. So we're going to start off with just probably one of my favorites. I think the other three. So the next Miku will be one of my all-time favorite Mikus. I have a poster of her in my room as well done by the lovely Naguri from, I don't remember, I think it's from 2014 um, from Odafest. I got a print and it was signed by Naguri and she's like one of my favorite illustrators of all time. So the other two will be kind of like randomly chosen, but I'll get to talking about why I decided to draw them in a little bit. So it has been a little while since I've done recording of my actual tablet. So I think since the beginning of this year, I've kind of like switched up my kind of drawing setup. So it's been a little bit harder for me to record my tablet screen as of late. And I've been trying to find different ways for me to do so, but I think at this point, I will change the angle at some point as well. But for now, I am not going to be able to show the entirety of the screen. So hopefully I'm going to be putting a smaller version of the drawing in the upper left hand corner for now. And later on, it'll be moved to the bottom left hand corner so that you can kind of get an overview version of the drawing that I'm drawing currently, just because I think it's a little bit easier to view. And I'll definitely do this for like time lapses as well. So like people have something a little more stationary compared to if I'm doing a time lapse on my computer and it goes like by really quickly and it might get a little bit kind of like dizzying for some people. So let's talk about the process. So usually if I'm doing any kind of line work, which I tend to do for my chibis, I like to do it on Clip Studio Paint or Paint to a Sai, which is why I'm working on my tablet for today. So I did the sketch with the froggy pencil. Then I went ahead and lowered my sketch and decided to do line work on top. Now I mentioned in previous videos that I like to split my line work into about six different layers. So I have one purely for the skin, one for the eyes, one for the eyebrows, one for the hair, one for the clothing. And if I have any extra things, I can put that on an extra layer. But it's just easier for me to keep them on separate layers so that I can change the line work separately compared to the rest of the image. So I can change her line art for her skin areas and it won't kind of like impede with me trying to color in the line work for her hair. 
So already at this point, I've already changed the line work for her skin to be more of a softer, warmer reddish brown. And then her eyes have a combination of kind of like a dark navy blue alongside with a little bit of that pinkish red coming from the skin. And it just makes everything look a little bit more softer, if anything. So it's just something that I like to do to kind of like upkeep with my own organization. <laughs> I'm also softening the line work for the hair. And then we can move on to the clothing. So I do separate things into skin eyes, hair, and clothing when I'm doing coloring. But because I'm kind of like simplifying how I draw my chibis more recently, I've been sticking more or less with soft gradients and more or less just cell shading. Just because if the character has a lot of different colors or I have too much detail, I find that the cell shading style works a little bit better and it reads a little bit more easily on a smaller scale. So I am thinking of doing maybe like a mini series where maybe we'll pick up to I think three characters maybe and I want to redo all of my Genshin chibis. Maybe I'll like leave them for shorts or something else so that they don't take up a good chunk of my videos because at least Maybe I'll say it now. Uh, I think for the next few weeks or the month or so, I am going to focus on doing a lot more ASMR videos again because I kind of miss doing them and I think I'm comfortable in my current setup to return back and film them once again. So I feel like I am going to do that and do as many as I can before it hits kind of like into late spring. So that's kind of my goal for now. I feel like I just put the ASMR videos a little bit on the back burner just because it has been a little bit difficult to record sound recently. So I am going to do just a whole lot of ASMR videos for the next few weeks and hopefully you guys don't mind. But let's talk about the next chibi that I'm going to be working on. So the next one that you can see, hopefully, my reference will be in like the upper left hand corner, which is the Miku from, I think it's Shinkai Shoujo, which is one of my favorite songs ever since like, I think middle school. And I don't know, I just love the entirety of like the visuals of the song. I like the different uh, cover versions that people have done during like the Utaite kind of days. So I really wanted to take a crack and draw this Miku. So. Basically, I also want to potentially look back at my previous artwork when I was a lot younger, so probably like my middle school, early high school days, and draw a bunch of illustrations that I wanted to draw at the time that I couldn't, either due to my lack of skill or because I didn't have the time to or was afraid to make fan art of it. I'll post my old fan arts of Miku's right here that I can dig up. I have a bunch of other ones that I actually don't know where the files are for those pictures or illustrations went. So I'll only put a few on the screen and Shinkai Shoujo Miku is kind of like one of the ones that I've always wanted to do like a full piece kind of illustrated. I don't know why I said it in such a way, but I wanted to do like a full illustration of this particular Miku. And I think more recently, especially like in my later 20s so far, I've been really loving the underwater aesthetic. So I think I'm capable of making the illustration that I always wanted to when I was a kid. So I want to tackle that eventually and potentially any other kind of fan art of Vocaloid songs or even just like series, like anime series, manga series that I was into as a kid and just kind of like revisiting them. Because I don't know if I'm in like my nostalgic era or in this weird zone where I'm kind of like reminiscing about what I used to be interested in when I was younger and being very fond about like certain series and I feel like it would be kind of like treating my old self to fan art that I've always wanted to do but I never could do so it'd be kind of like making my younger self proud of what I can do now so I think it could be fun to do so I will see if I can make that into another mini series as well but I would love to just like work on a bunch of chibis in the future. Oh, if you guys get to like this far into the video, do let me know if you guys would be interested in some kind of like sticker club type of thing. I've always wanted to do something like that. And currently with my shop being closed for at least like the unforeseeable future for now, I feel like I could do just a kind of like sticker mail club kind of thing for the next month or two or even like a couple of months if you guys are interested in it and I can just do a bunch of like different chibi themed 
illustrations and drawings that could be really cute as stickers and stuff. And I want to see if I can make a sticker book as well really quickly or like a sticker journal where you guys can keep like your stickers in a one place with like reusable, uh, I, don't know what they're I don't know what they're called exactly, but they're like these sheets of uh, paper or whatever that has kind of more of a waxy kind of shiny finish and allows you to peel off stickers and reuse them. So I think it could be fun to do that. So I will plan for that in the future and kind of gauge whether or not you guys are interested in it. And if you guys are, definitely let me know and I will definitely consider it. So another thing I really love about this particular Miku is the simplicity of her outfit. So to kind of keep it a little bit more vibrant rather than keeping it kind of more like a stark or very mid-tone kind of bleak looking black, I wanted to add a little bit of a gradient. So I'm adding a little bit of that pink from her skin tone. I'm adding a little bit of blue from potentially her hair color. And then after that, I am making a new layer and setting it to multiply to do the shadows. So for all of the chibis in this kind of style that I've been doing more recently is that because I'm doing cell shading and I don't want to fuss around with changing different colors for different parts of like let's say the clothing and the hair and stuff, I've been relying a lot of using multiply and screen. So multiply and screen are different blend modes that you can play with. And I've also added the multiply layer to the entirety of this Miku to make it look like she's underwater. I'm adding a add layer kind of doing the little patterning of water on top i basically duplicated the layer so that we can have one that's a little bit more softer and then we have one that's like a glow on top so it kind of creates it to have more of that water like effect of the light kind of seeping through the water surface and kind of dappling onto her i also missed the water droplets so i'm going to be adding those in but i think out of all the little chibis, the first three are definitely my favorite and maybe I was running out of steam when I was working on the fourth one, but you'll see a little bit later on what I'm talking about. But to make sure everything doesn't look too monochromatic with the blue, I did end up adding a overlay layer to kind of brighten up her face a little bit. So on to the next Miku. I am going to be looking at a lot of the different, I think it's the Project Voltage collaboration that Miku had with Pokemon. So this has a lot of my current favorite Miku designs just because they're so unique and I love the different color palettes and like the kind of Pokemon companion. So the one that I decided to choose to do for the little chibi because I didn't want to do too many from this particular I guess like project just because I know a lot of people won't be familiar with it or I guess like some people don't really have an interest in Pokemon and Vocaloid so I don't want to merge them together and kind of like alienate even more people but this one in particular is one of my favorites and I have painted this one in my sketchbook in the past with gouache but I love the color palette and just like the overall vibe of this particular Miku. So I definitely wanted to give a kind of like a chibi version of her a shot. So I wanted to her be kind of in a floating kind of pose. And I really wanted to tackle the hair and I kind of wished I did more of that glitching of her like her legs and her hair a little bit more. It might have also been because of her pose that I was covering up a lot of her body, but the areas where the glitch kind of happens, like it's like around her thighs and her upper arm, it's hard to see. So I didn't really include it as much as I could have. I'm also throwing in Miss Magius or Miss Magius into the drawing as well as kind of like a little companion in a much more kind of smaller form. So the other ones that I potentially wanted to do for picking any of the Mikus from the Project Voltage ones was also the flying type one, I believe, which is with Altaria. And that one's just super cute. I love her entire kind of like design because she looks very fluffy, very airy and kind of like sophisticated. So I really like that one or not sophisticated, more of like chic looking. The other one I wanted to do also is the one with Jirachi. So I think that's one is the steel type version. And then the other one I wanted to do is either water, which is with Primarina, Primarina. I don't really remember the starter's name. And then the other one was the ground type one with Flygon, which is absolutely a design that I really, really liked. And I kind of wish I did a chibi version of her, but you'll see at the end what I do with that because I definitely liked that design and I like Flygon a lot too. So I really wanted to do something with that design. 
but the line art for this one kind of was a little bit easier because the shapes felt a little bit more loose, kind of like wiggly and very simple. So I didn't really have a hard time working on this one. Also, uh, oftentimes if I have characters who have like hair hanging in front of their face, so let's say in front of their eyes or their eyebrows, I will also just like section off those portions and lighten it up with the airbrush so that they kind of appear more translucent. And you'll see like when I'm doing the coloring, it kind of appears that way and the eyes don't seem like they're sitting on top of the hair the eyebrows doesn't seem like it's on top of the hair so hopefully it reads a little bit more better than just having those blatantly on top of bangs that have no transparency i guess or has too much transparency so yeah, it's just something I really like doing before I do the coloring, if I can, just because when I'm filling with the bucket tool, sometimes I miss those areas because they are solidly filled in. So for her skin tone, I made her a lot more pale. I also leaned it very kind of like a cooler pink and towards purple, just because she kind of has more of that cooler toned vibe rather than having very warm kind of like orangey or peachy tones in her skin tone. After that, I decided to do the eyes a little bit differently. So the thing about doing fan art sometimes, I like to find kind of like a middle ground between my style versus the style that the character is actually in. So I kind of compromised by making the ring the same as the current Miku. But because of all my Miku little chibis or just like my chibis in general for the current style that I'm working in, I like having a gigantic white highlight in the very middle of their iris. So for this one to make sense, I did the same thing with just the ring around it and I did a little highlight in the very center. And I think that reads a little bit more clearly than if I did it the normal style that I did the other Miku's in. Also, I kept the shading for this one very simple, so there's not a lot of like hair highlights other than this little kind of flower pattern on the top of her head, which I made more of a glowing pattern. I also added the multiply layer to her skin, her eyes, and her hair on separate layers so that we could add kind of like that band of darkness that kind of sits on the very top of her, which I actually really like how some people do this for like stylistically giving them kind of like that aura or that vibe that seems very dark. So it's kind of fun to add as well to the little chibi version. So if you're also a fan of like Vocaloid or even like Miku just in general, do let me know what your favorite either song is or your favorite version of Miku or outfit or whatever because Miku has a lot of projects and I know a lot of you guys play, uh, I think it's Project Sekai, so a colorful stage. So there's a lot of Vocaloid in that as well because I believe there's Miku, there's Rin and Lan, then there's, I think, Kaito and Mako in there as well. Maybe Luca? I think Luca might be in there as well. But, oh, wait. Oh, okay, maybe I won't spoil it. There is a Megurin Luca song that I really want to do fan art for because it was my all time favorite song as a kid or like in my middle school days. So I'll definitely make some kind of video for that, either traditionally or. ASMR digitally something, I don't know what yet, but I definitely want to do something for it. So moving along to the last Chibi Miku. So I actually don't know exactly what this design is for other than for Miku Day, I believe, because I just opened up Twitter, I think a couple of days ago and I saw the, the designer or the illustrator for this particular Miku post about this and I thought this design was so cute. I kind of wish I didn't butcher it that badly when I drew it in the chibi version but I love this Miku's like color scheme. It's kind of like brighter and lighter and I like the kind of gradation from her hair being teal to kind of like that yellow but the way the color kind of bridges in between has like a very nice kind of like pale lime green color which looks super cute. I didn't include her bag just because I found at least in my chibi version, it felt a little bit too busy. I also ended up changing her arm just because it didn't really make any sense and it felt very unbalanced in a way. So yeah, I don't know. This, this Miku in particular, 
not the design, but like the way how I drew the chibi version is definitely not my favorite out of the four that I ended up doing. But in the future, I am going to do the other Mikus just because I would like to match the ghost one with the rest of them or the rest of them with the ghost version. And I think it'll look very cute as a little like Miku set or something. <laughs> it'll kind of give me an excuse to draw more Pokemon stuff because I still have Pokemon on the brain for the most part for the rest of this month, probably. <laughs> so while I'm doing the line art, I'm trying to think of what else was I supposed to update you guys on in terms of video stuff. Oh, thank you guys for submitting the plethora of characters that you listed on the community post for me to draw for the six character challenge i'm going to post another thing for you guys to suggest like ideas just because i want to do another oc scenario uh prompt thing but i want you guys to be able to submit your prompts and put my ocs in any scenarios that you want and i'll pick a few to draw from i think it might be fun to do it comic styled or something like that of that sort so yeah i'll maybe do a few just because i did introduce kaisen uh rico and i guess like salwin as well but salwin isn't really part of like masaki's uh universe so i'm not sure if i'm going to include him i'll make a post about it and you guys can give me suggestions on oc kind of scenarios for me to illustrate or do like a mini comic of because i think it'll be good practice and kind of fun to let you guys decide what i can draw because i tend to stick with like similar themes so it'd be nice to see kind of like a difference or variation on how the characters can react that's not like biased from myself i guess so oftentimes when I'm doing the shadings with like the multiply layer, if there is a gradation, sometimes the gradation doesn't work for the entirety of her hair. So for me, I decided to change the gradation instead of from like a light purple, I changed it to a light pink for the multiply layer just because the pink reads a little bit more vibrant on the yellow and the pink doesn't read too poorly on the green or the kind of base minty portion of her hair. But the purple made the yellow look really dull and it's probably because it is like complementary colors. So definitely play around with the colors you choose, especially if you're working with like a multiply layer or any blend mode layers because sometimes there is a better option out there and it's fun to play around to see what kind of colors work best with your color selection. Similar to here, so instead of the kind of like dark purpley blue that I had initially, I changed it to pink, which I think fit a little bit better with her overall color palette alongside with the kind of shading of her hair as well, which is very pink and kind of brightly forward compared to if I were to use kind of like a dull purple for the multiply layer, which might make everything look a little bit more like grayish and kind of desaturated in a way. Because of her outfit being so light and there's a lot of white, I didn't end up adding too much of like a screen layer for highlights, but I think that is it for the four little chibis of Miku. So we have Snow Miku from 2024, we have Shinkai Shoujo Miku, we have the, I don't know what this is from, I'm gonna say Miku Day Miku, and then we have the ghost type Miku, and I put white borders around all of them as well. I'll do a small little close-up for you guys of each of them, and then we'll move on to the mysterious fifth drawing, I guess. <laughs> So I was going to make this actually the main video, but because people might not recognize this as a Miku because of the way how I drew it alongside because this is a collaboration with Pokemon, I just feel like it wasn't as recognizable. So this is the ground type Miku design that was done for Project Voltage. So I wanted to do an illustration and this is what I ended up with in the end. So I'm adding it at the very end of this video instead of making it the main video just because I didn't want this video to be too long for you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Also happy Miku day if you are also drawing a bunch of Mikus for today and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!